Welcome. This is Avia Learn. In this video, we will see the Electronic Instrument System EIS in Airbus A320 family and its subsystems. I hope you will enjoy the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. In comparison to old technology aircraft, the flight deck on the A320 is designed to be a comfortable, non-cluttered work environment. By using modern electronic display units, the presentation of information to the pilots has been improved. The new electronic instrument system, EIS, has six identical full-color liquid crystal displays, LCD, units. The EIS is divided into two subsystems, the Electronic Flight Instrument System, EFIS, for which each pilot has two displays, the Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitoring System, it came, which uses the two displays in the sender to provide information on the aircraft systems. Let's look at the EFIS system first. Flight parameters are displayed on primary flight displays, PFD, while navigation data is displayed on navigation displays, ND. Outboard of the PFD, there are control knobs to adjust the brightness of the related PFD and ND, or to turn the display off. There are also switches to swap displays between the PFD and the ND. The two displays in the center are dedicated to the Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitoring System, ECAM. At this stage we will simply introduce the ECAM displays and the related controls. The upper ECAM display is called the Engine Warning Display, EWD. The lower ECAM display is called the System Display, SD. Various aircraft system parameters can be viewed on these screens. As an example, you can see a sequence of all SD pages one after the other. Another philosophy used on the flight deck is the lights out configuration. When the aircraft is in its normal flight state, there will be no white lights illuminated in any of the switches on the overhead panel. As an example, just before takeoff, if you look up at the overhead panel, there should be no white lights on on any of the switches. Let's look at some switches. For the majority of the switches on the overhead panel, the push-button switch logic is normal configuration, no light showing, the lights out philosophy. Abnormal condition, amber fault light, this helps to identify the switch related to an abnormal condition. White light, if normally the system should be operating and is deactivated, a white off light comes on. If normally the system should not be operating and is activated, a white on light comes on. On the overhead panel, some switches are used on a temporary basis or may have an indication of their state. The logic is temporary selection for operational reasons, blue on light for example and ice. Applicable system status, green light, for example a PU available. You will see this philosophy demonstrated throughout the course. The ECAM control panel is on the center pedestal, below the ECAM displays. On the left hand side, two controls turn on off and adjust the brightness of the two ECAM screens. Just below the ECAM screens, on the pedestal, is a switching panel, for use in abnormal situations, to restore data to the EFIS and ECAM displays. In front of each pilot, there are two attention getters, a red master warning and an amber master caution. 
As a further means of getting the pilot's attention, there is a loudspeaker on each side of the cockpit for oral alerts and voice messages. Note: The loudspeakers can also be used to listen to ATC and the intercom. Now let's go back to the EFIS system. For the EFIS displays, data from the Air Data and Inertial Reference System ADIRS, plus navigation data from the Flight Management and Guidance System FMGS, is fed directly to three display management computers DMC. The three identical DMCs process the data and generate the images to be displayed. In normal operation, DMC-1 supplies FOS information to the captain's PFD and ND. DMC-2 supplies the first officer's PFD and ND. DMC-3 is available as a backup. Now let's look at the other EIS subsystem. ECAM, and how the ECAM displays get their data. Sensors are fitted throughout the aircraft to monitor the various systems, including system controls operated on the flight deck. Data for some parameters, for example fuel quantity and primary engine indications, is routed directly from the system sensors to the 3 dmcs Note that there are separate channels within each DMC for a Cayman FS. For the majority of the systems, the sensors supply data to two system data acquisition concentrators, STAC. The STACs acquire system data, process it, and send some of it as system page data to the three DMCs. In normal operation, DMC-1 drives the Captain PFD, Captain ND, and the ECAM display units. DMC-2 drives the First Officer PFD and First Officer ND. DMC-3 is on standby, ready to drive any display unit as backup. Two identical flight warning computers FWC receive data from the stacks to generate amber questions and the aircraft system sensors to generate red warnings and other amber cautions. The FWCs then supply the DMCs for the display of alert messages, the attention getters, the loudspeakers for oral alerts and synthetic voice messages. All the components shown can be collectively called the ECAM system. We will study the use of the ECAM system in a separate module. In addition to EFIS and ECAM, time measurement devices are provided. The master time reference for all aircraft systems is provided by a clock located on the right side of the main panel. In this example, the time is 1328. The time is also displayed at the bottom of the system display. In this module, we have introduced you to the electronic instrument system, with its two subsections, EFIS and ECAM, and the clock. In the next modules, we will concentrate mainly on the ECAM system, and then, later in the course, return to look at the EFIS displays in greater detail.